motion is relative in order to understand how the events happening in one frame as observed with the respect to other frame even though one frame is in relative motion with respect to other we need to transform the frame of references well what is the meaning of transformation between two frame of reference well to understand it let's suppose two person a and b is standing 10 meter apart further suppose there's a flying object moving horizontally above them the two person will observe the same y component at any given time however they will observe different x coordinates though we can represent the whole events by these two equations in in general within the newtonian construct we use galilean transformation to understand how the motions or events happening in one inertial frame with respect to the other suppose there are two reference frames designated by s and s dash such that the coordinate axes are parallel suppose s dash is moving with respect to s with velocity v in x direction then we have these four intuitive relationships these sets of equations is known as the galilean transformation they enable us to relate a measurement in one inertial frame to another for example suppose we measure the velocity of a vehicle moving in the x direction in system s and we want to know what would be the velocity of the vehicle in s dash so we can calculate the v dash x by simply substituting the value of x dash in the equation dx by dt well this is the result our intuition is well familiar with now suppose we wanted to check the newton second law is the same in two different frame now we put the observer in the on prime frame and the other in the prime frame now moving with the velocity v relative to the on prime frame consider the vehicle of the previous case undergoing a constant acceleration in the x direction so we can calculate the force f dash is equal to m dash a dash and now simply substituting the value of x dash in the equations and we get f is f dash is equal to m dash a dash which is equal to m a which is equal to the force in the s frame indeed it doesn't matter which inertial frame we observe from we recover the same second law of motion is time in the parallels of physics we say that the second law of motion is invariant under the galilean transformation well so far so good but as we move to the electromagnetic domain problems arises with the galilean transformation so let's talk about this so we know that the maxwell equations are rock solid equation of electromagnetism and now from the maxwell equations we can derive the wave equation of electromagnetism now let's check if the maxwell equations are invariant under the galilean transformation for this we need to proceed further from the wave equation let's transform the wave equation for a frame which is translating in x direction and the calculation is very simple here we have to substitute the value of x dash which is equal to x minus vt in the equation equation of the electromagnetic wave. after substituting the value of x dash is equal to x minus vt we can get the relation between x and x dash similarly we can get the relation between t and t dash now from equation 2 and 3 we arrive at a equation which ca- which we can call the wave equation for the second frame which is translating with velocity v in the x direction before proceeding further now let's talk about the special theory of relativity the theory of special relativity was given by einstein in 1905 when he was just 26 years old well the main two postulates of relativity is the first that the law of physics must be same in all the inertial reference frames and the second the speed of light in vacuum has the same value in all the inertial reference frames the second postulate of special relativity is verified by michelson morel experiment who found out that the value of c dash is always equal to c instead of c plus v which was required by galilean relativity the galilean transformation hence is invariant with the maxwell equation also this can be verified from the wave equation of the translating frame Now since the speed of light is constant irrespective of the frame of reference so our final equation should have been del square by del x square minus 1 by c square upon del square by del t dash square 
psi dash is equal to zero instead of what we got in the above equation. There is lots of confusion. Shall we throw out all the electromagnetism theory, or we should stick up with the Galilean transformation? But this is hard to throw out the electromagnetism theory since Maxwell equation prediction are verified by lots of experiment, and it is hard to fault Maxwell equation. The problem should be somewhere else. But where? Earlier we have discussed about constancy of speed of light, which implies that both time and distance have to adjust in such a way that speed of light is constant for all observer. Keep that in mind. We come up with the another coordinate transformation, and it is known as Lorentz transformation. The fact that speed of light is c in all inner cell frame implies a relativity in space time. So we will choose x dash equal to gamma. Into x minus v t and t dash equal to gamma t minus x v upon c square. Since we are considering motion of frames in only x direction, so y dash and z dash will be same as y and z. Where gamma is the scale of relativity between reference frames, wave equation is del square upon del x square minus one upon c square del square upon del t square into psi equal to zero. To change the reference frame, del square upon del x square and del square upon del t square should be written in terms of del square upon del x dash square and del square upon del t dash square. And psi will change into psi dash. To do that, we will use eigen function and eigen value rel relation. That is, del upon del x equal to del x dash upon del x del in upon del x dash plus del t dash upon del x del upon del t dash. Since this time, x dash equal to gamma x minus v t. So its partial differentiation with respect to x gives us gamma, and since t dash equal to gamma t minus x v upon c square, its partial derivative with respect to x gives us minus gamma v upon c square. We have del upon del x equal to gamma into del upon del x dash minus v upon c square del upon del t dash. Using same formula to get del upon del t in terms of del upon del t dash. We have we get uh, del upon del t equal to gamma into del upon del t dash minus v del upon del x dash, but we require double derivative of both. For that, we will use same eigen function eigen value relationship again, and finally we will have del square upon del x square equal to gamma square into del square upon del x dash square minus two v upon c square del square upon del x dash del t dash. Plus v square upon c to power four, del square upon del t dash square, and del square upon del t square equal to gamma square into del square upon del t dash square minus two v del square upon del x del t dash plus v square del square upon del x dash square. These value in wave equation, we get gamma square into one minus v square upon c square into del square upon del x dash square plus gamma square. Into v square upon c to power four minus one upon c square into del square upon del t dash square. To qualify this equation as wave equation, gamma square into one minus v square upon c square equal to one, and this implies gamma is equal to one upon under root one minus v square upon c square. Put values of uh, value of gamma, we will finally reach to our standard wave. Equation. Note that the Lorentz transformation reduced to Galilean transformation when v will be very less than two c.